Hello, everybody. I'm Eric, call sign N1JUR, and welcome to my channel. We're going to dive into three more iOS apps uh, for ham radio. And maybe you're into DX hunting or making contacts with the space station, or maybe you're like me and you suffer from CRS syndrome when you can't remember a call sign and you're talking to someone on a repeater. Well, I got three apps that hopefully will help you solve those problems. So let's get into it. All right, so this first app I have is called DX Editions 365. Don't let this app kind of scare you because in essence, although it's very simple in its nature and how it's built, it really provides a really good service for say someone who's uh, interested in uh, hunting uh, DX Expeditions. I know from time to time there's those rare locations and, and uh, expeditions that you want to get for your DXCC or other awards. Uh, well, this tool might actually help you uh, in being able to at least determine when they might be on the air and when they're operating. But let's get into the app a little bit and I'll explain why I think uh, there are a little few items that maybe are, are fall short of making it a full featured app. So if we go over to the app here, uh, you'll see that this view is uh, very useful. It took me a little while to adjust to. However, um, it provides on a roughly a 10 day schedule um, when the expeditions uh, that are already currently either deployed or out there or will be going out uh, to these rare islands and locations uh, that you don't have a, a DXCC for, most people don't, it notifies you of when the uh, expedition might be on the air at that moment with the nice little icon that flashes on the air, which I find is really, really cool because in essence, it uh, can give me some very quick uh, moments glance details on a you know a specific D expedition I might want to be able to you know try to make contact with. However, you know the app itself, looking at it is is very, I won't say super confusing, but in essence, based off of what I see in front of me within the app, you'll see that it's got a color code um, plan and they're from brown to dark blue. Now, the developer didn't decide to include maybe a color key and someone like myself who's not a true you know in the weeds dx expedition hunter uh, might not know what those color schemes uh, refer to or how they you know might coincide with each of the dx expeditions and there's no way to kind of really you know get that information unless you go to some other resource somewhere else i think if um you know a little uh, effort goes a long way you know, mentality with this, that maybe if the um, developer in the about section actually just did something a little bit more uh, of a description as to what the color codes mean, um, how the app can be useful, uh, might actually, you know, make it a little bit more um, popular for those that are, you know, using it. Otherwise, you know, I can go to their links, but, you know, from a standpoint, if I'm in the app, why would I want to go somewhere else? I really want to have it close by. Um, and it doesn't really offer a whole lot um, outside of just what's going on for the D-Expeditions that are currently available. Now, one feature that I thought would needed to be a little bit more improved um, was that obviously he's cramming a lot of information into the app itself, um, especially when you go beyond uh, the current day setting. And the drawback to that, I think, is that um, you know having more sliders or more capabilities to be able to navigate might be more useful. I think the other thing that would be beneficial, especially for someone who's a new DXer, um, being able to actually tap maybe on the air buttons or tap the actual links themselves and then be sent off to that D Expeditions website to be able to find more information about what bands they're working. Because right now I can't tell through this app what modes they might be operating at that time without actually taking the call sign, going to another location and finding that information. But it's a good start. I think this app can be improved a lot more if the developer took a little bit more time to be able to add those features in. And so, again, this is a free app, so take it as uh, you see. But I thought it was kind of useful and, and kind of interesting and definitely uh, a tool that um, makes me at least more aware of what's going on in and around the ham community. So that's D Expeditions 365. All right. 
application number two. This one's called Ham Searcher. Now, there are a plethora of applications out there. Would you say I have a plethora? Applications out there that I've reviewed in the past as well, uh, that provide some call sign type. One of the things I've found with those applications is that it's usually just another feature add-on to something else within the, you know, multi-Swiss Army uh, version of that application uh, can offer. But I never really latched on, you know, fully to the QRZ mobile. Um, as it kind of really just was very simplistic in its nature, although very good. Um, didn't really offer me a whole lot of like interesting, you know, tidbits of information or details that I might, you know, want to be able to pull uh, on a certain call sign. So uh, I suffer from the CRS, um, you know, syndrome, as we all know what that is, is that you, you're, you know, this scenario might play out for you. You're, you know, in your car and you're on a repeater and a new call sign pops up. And of course, you introduce yourself and you start to do a little bit of rag chew with them. And you find that, you know, three, four minutes into the conversation, you've already forgot the call sign. And, you know, you have to apologize and ask them again to repeat it. And, you know, you find that after the end of the queue. So, you know, you're like, oh, man, I really want to look that guy up or look like that girl up and and uh, find out more information. Uh, wouldn't it be great to have an app that was right there and allowed you to be able to pull that information? Well, in steps uh, Ham Searcher. So. With this app, you can easily just pull it up. And so say like I was going to put in, I bumped into Josh, K6, K-I-6-N-A-Z. And I just pop this call in there. You'll see that it queries the QRZ database and a bunch of other you know, databases um, for a lot of information, um, which I find is really, really cool. So it pulls in a location uh, map where you can actually you know, see you know, where the location <laughs> that pulls in by that address might be. Uh, you can also... Uh, click on the more info button and it'll send you right off to the FCC's website um, to pull uh, all of the FCC public records that, you know, uh, it has access to. I find it's really, really, you know, informational and, and useful. But, you know, one thing I really like about the feature, and again, this is a very simple feature, but it's really useful, is that say I wanted to actually, um, you know, save this person in my save lift because I, you know, typed the call in, saw it was. I can go to my saved uh, calls and there's a little button in that record that says, hey, do you want to save this and tag it? Well, I can always save this call sign and always go back and look at it, you know, or look it up if I uh, need to. Um, it's a great, simple, easy application, really does a good job uh, in displaying the information. And for me, it's going to save me from the CRS syndrome that I suffer all the time when I'm trying to remember people's names or call signs. And now I'll have it at a, at a moment's um, or fingers touch away. And, you know, it, it'll make things much easier for me. And I'm trying to remember people's names as I start to, you know, get to know them better. So that's um, Ham Searcher. All right. My third app of uh, this episode. Uh, this one is um, primarily uh, an app that I'm using uh, as part of my getting ready for summer field day. As we all know, uh, when summer field day rolls around, uh, we all kind of dive into our uh, equipment supplies and try to uh, dig out uh, some of our, say, satellite equipment. And I, I'm no exception to that rule. I uh, am in the process now of just trying to dust off some of my uh, ISS and, and just satellite gear. And so in that process, you know, part of it, uh, I want to obviously test it out and get it ready and, and make sure it's uh, working before I start to actually bring it to field day because, you know, I don't know about you, field day is not the place to test that out to make sure it's working. You want to make sure your gear is ready and uh, ready to go. So um, one of the apps that I use that I find is very useful um, is called uh, ISS Detector. Now with ISS Detector, if we dive in, you'll find that the app, when it fires up, it doesn't notify you 100% of the time to alert or, you know, pull your location data. So if you have that, say, disabled as a, you know, global feature, um, you might want to make sure that's enabled because if it's not, you'll find up in the top left-hand corner that little bell location um, it tells you that it can't determine your accurate, precise location. If you want to go in by app features, just go into the settings screen um, and then go find the ISS detector app and then turn on location services there. So the app uh, can determine where you're physically located on the globe, which is going to be super helpful in, in terms of tracking that satellite. The other thing I would say is go into the settings page and then in that settings pane, 
Um, you'll find that I have the use manual location off because in essence that's using the GPS data and location services. You can also manually, if you set the manual location on and you can go in and manually set the location you're at. So if you know what the field day site is um, or you know, you're at your home, you can plug that information in by grid square there and have it up and, and running. Um, I enabled obviously some of the show the current elevation, beep on sighting, um, because that's very useful in terms of as it comes closer. And then show plants on radar. I haven't had a chance to test that app uh, functionality out yet, but I find that i sure once I get it up into the sky, you'll start to be able to get a better idea of how and, and what that provides. And, and uh, I'm actually putting a separate video out um, on my satellite, um, you know, ISS um, kit. So uh, keep an eye out for that soon um, as I'm wrapping uh, or trying to wrap that up and get that going and I'll cover a little bit more about that. Now, notification time, I'm always um, very slow uh, on the the up to get you know prepared and ready. So one of the things I like to do is give myself enough of a buffer time to be able to prepare and get everything tested and working so when the pass does come over, I can be ready for it. Um, and then you can tweak some of the, obviously some of the other features, the distance, kilometers or miles, depending on you know what your preference is. Um, you know, time in main list, you can set the local time or UTC time, and then you can set a Doppler frequency. This app actually has an add-on feature that you can pay for uh, that allows you to enable rotator control uh, through the app. Um, I haven't explored that functionality, but if it's of an interest, um, I can definitely, uh, you know, dive into that a little bit more and, and maybe, uh, you know, um, show you and expose to you, uh, you know, what those functions and features do. So once you've tweaked your settings page a little bit, you'll see that there's a whole list of current passes or where the satellite might be located by day. Um, you'll notice at the very top, which is very, very useful, um, the next sighting based off of where your physical location is and how far away it's gonna be um, in terms of time. So then the next 10 hours is the next closest ISS satellite pass for myself. And if I wanted to scroll down here, I can go down and look for the ISS here on the 22nd. And you'll find that uh, you can pull up the details of that satellite specifically. You'll see very, you know, um, clear, the accurate details about um, on June 8th, how long the pass duration is going to be, what the end time is, what the elevation, everything you need to know to be able to make an accurate, um, you know, contact with the ISS um, itself and how you set up your antenna. The one feature I really, really like um, is the ISS Live. It pulls a lot of the NASA, you know, cameras and video from uh, their feeds if they're available. Um, and you can um, you know, view that from their page. This is currently in night mode. And then the one piece that um, I think is really, really great, especially if I'm doing you know, scheduling passes in the future, is that it has an ad calendar event feature. So if I wanna put that on my calendar, I can have my calendar notify me. I can set my own dates and times to, to provide a, a notification on top of what the app provides. Um, so it's really, really feature rich in that sense and, and provides me a, a very good way of, you know, staying on top of the next satellite pass and being ready to try to make contacts and test my equipment. Again, like I mentioned, the radar feature um, currently is not uh, obviously set up in this case. You're just seeing the, my desktop and uh, USB um, devices, but you can set that up towards the sky and use some of the functionality to get a better idea of where the satellite is in the pass and so forth and so on. And, and I'm happy to do another uh, kind of review on that if that's uh, someone uh, has an interest in seeing that. But that is ISS Detector. Um, I would say, uh, you know, if you're getting into satellites, this is one of those apps, including like Night Sky and a few others uh, that you want to have uh, when you're doing satellite work. And so uh, that's ISS Detector. All right, well, there you have it. Those are the three apps that uh, I uh, dove into so you don't have to. If any of those apps uh, are useful to you uh, and you've used in the past, you know, please definitely leave me a comment down below. I'm always curious to see how folks get anything out of these apps or they find that they, uh, you know, are, are useful or I might have missed a feature or a mode. And as always, you know, make sure you definitely like, subscribe uh, and share. And if you haven't already, I have a current uh, iOS apps playlist um, that I'll link in the uh, link uh, screen above. And uh, with that, uh, as always, thanks again for watching and 7-3.